great first start. What do you want from me? Another day, another chicken breast. Killer though, which has made me want to just be F this entire thing is. Hello, my name is Kelty O'Connor and welcome to my channel. What you normally find on my channel is I do behind the scenes of different workouts, I try these workouts and show you guys what you can expect and something you've been requesting a lot, trying different diets. I'm not saying do any of these diets I'm gonna be diving into in 2019, but I'm here to be the guinea pig. First one, let's start with the goat, right off the bat. Now, when I say the goat, you might not know who I'm referring to. If you don't, it's Giselle. Okay, Tom Brady and Giselle. Whoever you can take, this is Tom Brady's method, but obviously Giselle eats like this. I'm doing Tom Brady's insane diet in his T12 method book. I did it for a full month. I saw BuzzFeed did it, they did it for a day, and I was like, guys, that, no, be better. So I did it for a month, it was a doozy. Doozy, who uses the word doozy? What, the diet? Ah. Okay, I'm gonna explain it the best I can. It's odd at times, good, but odd. The reason I did this was for you guys, you request this a lot. I'm a big football fan, I'm actually a Packers fan, but like, gotta give Brady prop. Where credit is due. Now, I didn't do this to lose weight. I'm happy with where my body's at, but I won't lie. In November, I was kind of a crappy human and just ate randomly. So I, was, I was just bloated, you know, like digestion was a little off, wasn't being accountable in the best way I possibly could, especially because it's part of my job. It's obviously gonna be, oh, nice feet with my camera and everything. This is okay, this is not working, but it was 127 without my camera. I know, like, I'm not, like, have to lose a bunch of weight. Like, I'm happy with my body. I just feel, ugh, like, puffy and my digestion and just, like, bloaty, you know? Like, that's like pick myself apart. I just don't feel my best. Like, I just feel kind of like way down, digestion is off. So for everyone who's like, you don't need to lose any weight. I'm not doing this for a weight loss. As much as it's just like a whew, reset. And you know, if my abs could come back a little bit more, I wouldn't be mad. It's like, kinda, they're just holding on. Usually a bit more of a six pack. This is like a pack, one pack of beer because I'm drinking too much beer. <laughs> Get in my last fix. I always have candy on hand. I usually just go to Bulk Barn and get my favorites. The blue whales, the um, Coke bottles, sour candies of some sort. R.I.P. And by R.I.P. I mean, I'm just gonna eat them all right so, now. In honor of uh, the Tom Brady diet we're doing. <laughs> Like, let's dive into something and then bring you guys value because I know this is a highly searched video So I was like, you know what? Let's do it for a month. See what happens I had to write myself my own little list because he has this full book and I wasn't gonna be carrying around this entire thing <laughs> Reading it. Okay, so here are the rules. There's a bunch of rules. There's specific food Pretty much the premise is eating nutrient-dense foods at the right time and everything being alkaline So you don't change the pH in your body. That's a debated topic. I'm not getting into that the rules alkaline foods mainly portion size for my veggies and protein about two palms the size for veggie, about one size of my palm for protein. Stop eating three hours before bed. Said 9 to 10 p.m., which is, it's not gonna make you gain weight if you eat before bed, it's total calories in a day. What's kind of the point, eating right before you go to sleep? I know it can disrupt sleep, so I was like, you know what, this is probably sound good because I'm a snacker, big snack person. This is where it gets really weird and I struggled. It was the food combination that I just had to rewire what I think of a meal, because I think of a balanced meal, having some fruit or veggies, a complex carb, protein, and a healthy fat, either on any of those or on the side or you know, salmon. Nope, not with Tom Brady. I can eat veggies with protein or veggies with carb, but not eat my protein with my carbs. Technically, vegetables are a carb. Is butter a carb? But we all know what he means, complex carbs. Can't eat fruit with anything else, it has to be alone, which I guess is fine, I would just have like banana. But I was like, what happens if I want berries on something? I want berries on a salad, can I not do that? If I have rice in my salad, that's where it got weird. Breakfast, he usually had a smoothie or something nutrient dense, and then he said high fat, high protein. So it seemed to be not many carbs first thing in the morning. It's not really for me. Great start, I want to make sunny side eggs, forgot I had them on. <laughs> real, real runny eggs here, Kelty. Great first start, great first start. Then post-workout, always a protein shake.
Lunch always seemed to be fish, protein, a lot of veggies. There's a lot of veggies in this. We'll get into that. Snacks, kind of protein powder, bars, fruit, hummus, veggies, nuts, homemade crackers. I am not spending the time to make crackers. No, no one's got time for that. And that's another thing about this diet. It's expensive and he is a chef. I, I'm, I'm not worth the same amount as Tom Brady. Let's put it that way. Dinner, lots of fruit and veg and nutrient dense was the recommendation. I just think nutrients, this was the one I kind of combined everything and had a bit, bit bigger meal. His dessert in the evening was usually tea or bone broth. If he has treats, he has it earlier in the day, so I did change that. If I did want something sweet, it was earlier in the day. Eat seasonally, which I fully approve. Consume foods that are high in essential fatty acids, fiber, and variety. Let's go into hydration. This is what got 20 ounces of water right when you wake up, but caffeine. Guys, I was only allowed 200 milligrams of caffeine, and it's bad, but I have a very, 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 very high caffeine tolerance. Like 200 milligrams is like a, oh, just a little. Hmm. I have that probably right before bed, which is also something I needed to change. No soda or carbonation. I get the no soda, but I couldn't have soda water because he said it's dehydrating. I don't know if I believe that. Comment down below if that's legit, but everything I know about science, that does not add up. D Siri, does that not add up? Siri's never on. Starting every day with 20 ounces of water. I have a 20 ounce swell bottle, so I'm gonna sit here and chug this until it's gone. I'm actually really thirsty because beer. I was actually, I might do this whole thing right here. I am off to a great start. Quite guilty. Other things I was not allowed. Milk, dairy, fruit juice, sweetened drinks, alcohol. Anytime I did want to drink, I had to match everything I drank alcohol-wise to, to the amount of drinks. So if I had a beer, I had to drink that much water. He recommended not drinking every day. It was just kind of rare occasions. Okay, that's excessive, but moral story. I'm getting my water. Great. Antioxidants? I'm sure he's about the antioxidants. This is not red wine, <laughs> so I don't think that's it. So food choices, he had a shopping list. I can insert some examples. There's protein, there's the list. It was a lot of organic, fresh meats, free range, hormone and antibiotic free, which is all good, but it's gonna add up real fast. Ching, ching, ching. menu for supper today is I'm using the True Locals salmon and it's just a very simple recipe really healthy and this is like the most brainless recipe and it's all about having good ingredients I feel a recipe like this which is salmon dill I coated the salmon in olive oil is what I normally do but he says in the book not to use olive oil for cooking as more of a dressing so I use coconut oil instead so I put a light amount on my salmon I coated the asparagus with it then salt and pepper and then squeeze the lemon all over, fresh dill. We're gonna toss this in the oven and then be a nice, actually very, very healthy, good Tom Brady approved meal, which I would normally have. The only weird thing is I'd like to have stop group chats. <laughs> I like to have like uh, roasted potatoes, but I guess I'll have my potatoes in a couple hours because carbs and protein, weird. So those ones are okay to follow, but it just kind of sucked if I was in a rush and just wanted a sandwich. I honestly love cooking. I'm just not much of a meal prep, pack all my food and go. I just prefer to, if I'm gonna cook, actually make it a whole thing, sit down, enjoy, have a glass of wine, some appies with friends, family. That's cooking to me, not just mass cooking a bunch of meals. But sometimes you gotta do it. So I made what will be my lunch, some organic chicken baked with just a little bit of seasoning and some pink Himalayan salt and a bunch of veggies. It's got some broccoli, cabbage, kale, carrot, Brussels sprouts, all fried in coconut oil. Carbs, it was a lot of veggies in this, a lot of veggies. But oddly, a few vegetables I was not supposed to have, and this is where the problem happened. No corn, or mushrooms, eggplant, and then limited amounts of tomatoes and bell peppers. But then he had dressings he recommended, and he would recommend things like salsa. I'm like, but there's tomatoes and salsa, so why can I have the salsa, but not the tomatoes? Spaghetti sauce. That was okay, not tomatoes. And then fruits. Seems to always have like a midday pick-me-up fruit, so I did do that. But there's a few fruits I had to stay away from or have in moderation, like pineapples, raspberries, strawberries, kiwis, oranges, because they're acidifying. So it's all about balancing your pH. I'll let you decide if that's true. And not allowed, probably obvious, I feel it's kind of in any diet. Breads and pastas, breakfast cereal, potato chips, popcorn, nacho chips, crackers, sugary snack, aka yum. What's turning in to be the hardest part of this challenge? is Christmas treat 
season. And I have such a sweet tooth, and especially for cookies and chocolate, shortbread, and everyone gifts you so much of it. And normally I'm like, I have bites and I'm fine with it. But even my realtor came and dropped over this really good shortbread. <laughs> Just the 80-20 rule is uh, usually a 20-80 rule around December. Fats, it was all the healthy fats. The nuts, the good oils, avocado, coconut. I know I say avocado wrong, but I'm also allergic to it, so I didn't have any of that. So that's my one allergy, weird. Millennial, I don't know, missed that. Missed that train, not allowed. Trans fats, cooking oils, soy-based, and no dairy. I don't really like cheese. I already drank almond and cashew milk, that was fine, but ice cream, oh. We had some mental battles, and that is what I did for a month. I had moments moments of this was great and moments of mm, no. So here's my first experience. I got up first day, I'm ready, I had all this food prepped, already had my 200 milligrams of caffeine by 10 a.m. Which was fine till 4 p.m. hit and I hated everyone and it was a struggle and what you want to do when you know you can't have the caffeine is I want to turn to things like chocolate. Not good. He did say 80-20% rule but I did try to limit that to like one time a week with friends and wait for that instead of just having a random piece of chocolate throughout the day which I'm very guilty of. First few days the hardest thing had to just be caffeine for me. I didn't find the food that hard. It was just more getting used to the timing like having not having carbs first thing in the morning unless it was just in a smoothie. Thinking of meals. It didn't combine my carbs protein that was okay it was just it was just weird and I still am not sold on it I didn't find it helped improve my digestion in any way the one thing I did find that did really immediately help with my digestion at least myself was stop eating at 9 p.m. and I wasn't so concrete about this because sometimes I stay up a lot later but just trying to stop eating two to three hours before I went to bed I woke up feeling better I had better sleeps and I just didn't feel as bloated all the time it just really got hard when I was watching Netflix and popcorn another struggle which was actually I think good and bad all at the same time is just convenience is a lot of these things whether it be cooking the meat and having the right kind of meat not just picking up something that's already pre-made in the store as long as Sundays and one other time during the week I was prepping a lot of food then I was okay and then it was good because I'm really guilty of when I'm on the go because with my job I'm just always running around Toronto it's just picking up whatever I possibly can and I do try to make healthy choices but of course they're not always the best there's a lot of healthy stores here in Toronto luckily I did find that was good because it really did improve my energy levels I didn't feel as Snacky, I felt more level energy throughout the day. It was just convenience was frustrating. Impact Kitchen, I go to quite often and I went there a few times. Pretty much everything on that menu was safe in this diet, except for I, some dairy products sometimes, or I picked it off. So, no dairy, so the feta, <laughs> trying to pick up as best as I can. The rest is good. Or there was things with tomatoes that I just had in limited amount. Those restaurants tend to be expensive, but this diet, that's probably also the hardest thing. It's a financial and time commitment. Of course, Tom Brady has his own chef. They can do all this, so that makes it a lot easier. But as a single female, it struggles. But at least I only have to make it for myself, not a family. It's not going to be the cheapest diet. You have to be really smart and go to farmer's markets, which we should be doing if you really want to do this in a more financially friendly way. <laughs> The diet forced me to be good yesterday. I did not become prepared. I had a very late night. I had three meetings to run to. I was filming. It was just one of those days I had so much. I had no time to prep for food. I was so drained. Like, and I didn't have time to have a meal. I was going to go for a meal in like an hour and a half. I just needed a snack. And normally I'd probably be bad and just grab a coffee, some caffeinated sugary thing. I just need a quick fix. But I was like, no, that's not what your body needs. Ran into this little organic grocery store and picked up a bag of baby carrots. And and I, don't, and I had a big handful of carrots and that's all I needed to tide me over is a much better choice than gingerbread latte from Starbucks. This is probably you saw in the thumbnail and probably the biggest hurdle I had to overcome and actually I think it's a benefit for a lot of people but it wasn't good for me and why I had to be really conscious. Now you eat a lot of veggies in this which are so good but the problem about vegetables is they're very high volume for not that many calories. Now we said I didn't want to lose weight I just wanted to kind of feel a bit better things flowing a bit better a little less bloated I didn't want to actually lose weight like go down a body fat percentage about two or three weeks into this I woke up gone like I woke up and I felt weak and brittle and I looked in the mirror and was like whoa ribs and the reason being is because you're eating so much vegetables and leaner proteins and things like that another day 
another chicken breast. It's tough to get in a lot of calories when you're eating that high volume of food, which is great if, and you're trying to lose weight because then you're more satisfied, you're getting more nutrients for lower calories. So it's great for someone dieting, someone who's trying to maintain their weight, not good. I was just had to be a lot more smart my last few weeks as I ate a lot more nuts, I snacked on those, and I just looked for higher fatty proteins instead of things like chicken and shrimp. I went for more salmon and better cuts of beef and that, and I found that helped a lot, adding a bit more cooking oil and snacking on nuts, that really help and so I feel I'm at a good weight now versus halfway through it was unattractive and I just I felt like weak I just have to be conscious I know that's something I struggle with and if you're someone who wants to lose weight so there's pros and cons there you go 30 days are over how do I feel honestly I won't lie I feel really good in the sense that I'm not consuming as much caffeine as I normally do I still have the 200 milligrams I won't lie I cheated a few times that was the one thing I did cheat on but at least I've scaled it back and I think that's all in comparison I mean like I'm someone who can have 800 milligrams of caffeine a day so limiting to 200 a day and only a few times going over is actually a big improvement and I do find it helps my sleep I found my digestion is better I found my energy was good it's just having nutrient-dense food staying high hydrated, getting proper sleep is what we all need. It's just the little things not to sweat over and that's my problem with this diet. It's like tomatoes. Okay, maybe we shouldn't all live off tomatoes, but if you have a tomato, it's not gonna kill you. The meal timing is good and if you're a professional athlete who that's all you have to really worry about is training and nutrition, then it's really good. Your regular day-to-day -day person shouldn't be so structured in that I can't have protein and carbs together. That's very unneeded. But if that works for you and improves your quality of life, go for it, not for me. The other really good one was I think eat seasonally. I think it's better for the environment. It's better for you. It's actually better for your wallet. Do you think it did encourage me to go to the farmer's market, buy local a lot more? Something we should all be doing. Like support the little guys. Walmart, you're doing okay. You're doing okay. What did I do though immediately after this? <laughs> Oh, make friends with chefs, the life lesson. I drank all the wine, all the champagne, all the beer, all the meats and crackers, not homemade, just crackers. The most gorgeous fatty steaks, scalloped potatoes, everything and oh, honey needed that. <laughs> But it was good way and reset going into the new year, I think, of just a few things that we should all be doing in our diet. But my God, this is a little too strict and weird. Just weird sometimes. <laughs>